Hi, in this particular video, we're going to be looking specifically at speed, distance, time type questions. They're aimed at roughly about grade five on a GCSE. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. If you need any help, please don't hesitate to add a comment below. Always come back to you and I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at uh, questions which are specifically for speed, distance and time. So please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. Add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. Give me a like if you're happy with, uh, with the video today and I hope it's useful to you. So let's start with tra uh, question number one. A train travels 210 miles in four hours. Calculate the average speed of the train in miles per hour. Okay, so there's a couple of ways of remembering this I would always write speed equals distance divided by time now the reason I know that to be true is because the uh, unit of speed is miles which is a measurement of distance per means over and then hour is a measurement of time so distance over time miles per hour okay I do see people using triangles it's perfectly fine if you do that and if you remember where the s the d and the t go but in my particular case I tend to look at the units okay so the distance is going to be 210 now the time is going to be four hours because we're doing miles per hour so 210 divided by four is going to give us a speed of 52.5 miles per hour and that would be the answer to that particular question okay let's move it on then to question number two so a car travels a distance of 160 miles and this time in three hours and 45 minutes calculate the average speed of the car and it does particularly say give your answer in miles per hour correct to one decimal place so when that happens i'd say generally this is going to be a calculator question okay generally not always the case but generally okay so let's go again with the same formula and i'm always with each of these questions going to write it out the formula it does really help to remember the formula and sort of cement it in your own mind so speed equals distance divided by time the distance is going to be 160 now the time is 3 hours and 45 minutes so basically it's 3 hours and then part of an hour and the part of an hour is going to be 45 out of 60 minutes. Now, for me, again, I find that the easiest way to do it, particularly now using scientific calculators, because it will allow you to uh, put this calculation directly into the calculator and be able to work it out. So you might know that 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour, so it would actually be in decimals, 160 divided by 3.75 if you prefer to use decimals but I tend to prefer this and I use the same method each time when I put that into my calculator I'm going to get a speed of 46.376 dot 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 so to correct to one decimal place in miles per hour is going to be 46.4 miles per hour on that particular question. Okay, let's move on then to question number three. Uh, a long distance runner runs at five meters per second. Uh, how far can the runner travel in one hour? In other words, how far can they travel in 60 minutes? Or if you like, 3,600 seconds. Okay, because we need to make those conversions. So five meters per second, if I multiply that through by 60, because there are 60 seconds, Seconds in a minute what I'm going to get is 300 meters per minute and what I've done there is I've times by 60 because 60 seconds in a minute okay so 300 meters per minute and then really it's just a case of multiplying by 60 again if I multiply by 60 again I get 180 zero 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 and that's going to be meters per hour 
Okay, so I've multiplied by 60 again to get that meters per hour. And then really I need to convert it as the question asks, give your answer in kilometers. So there are a thousand meters in a kilometer. So if I divide this 18,000 by a thousand, I'm going to get 18 kilometers per hour. And that would be the answer to that particular question. Okay, hopefully that's okay for you. Let's move on then to question number four. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of these questions, compare your solutions. Okay, so Xavier leaves his house at 7.30 a.m. to go to work. Okay, and he drives 45 miles, so an average speed of 30 miles an hour. Um, what time does Xavier arrive at work? Well, Let's have a look at the speed. So again, I'm going to write the same formula. Speed equals distance divided by time. OK, well, he drives 45 miles at an average speed of 30 miles an hour. So what we need to do is figure out how long it takes him to do that actual drive. So we just plug in the numbers. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm just checking that I've got 30 miles per hour and I've got 45 miles. So the units are the same. And again, it's very, very useful to make sure you keep an eye at least on the units to make sure that they are going to work well for you within this formula. Okay, so 45 miles is the distance and time is unfortunately the bottom of the denominator. Now, there are ways in which you can manipulate this equation to make time the subject. Um, very, very briefly, I would multiply both sides by time and then I would divide through by 30. Now, if you didn't kind of get that, don't worry about it. If you just provide a, a message in the um, comments below, I'll send you through a link to another video that will give you a little bit more experience with manipulating these formulas. So time is going to be equal to 45 divided by 30. OK, now uh, that will work out as 1.5 hours. OK, so it takes Paul Xavier one and a half hours worth of commuting to actually get to the office or to go to work. So if I want to find out what time he arrives at work, it's going to be 7.30 a.m. when he leaves plus 1.5 hours. OK, that's going to take him exactly to nine o'clock in the morning. OK, I do feel sorry for him. That's an awful long commute. OK, so let's move on then to question number five. So question number five is Liber travels from Leeds to Manchester, an average speed of 56 miles per hour. The journey takes one hour and 15 minutes. Well, why have they told us that? Well, they told us that because what we've got there is a measurement of speed and a measurement of time. OK, so therefore we can use this first part to actually work out distance. And that's really why they've done that. So I would kind of be careful, really. You can move on, move and read the uh, go on and read the rest of the um the question if you want to, but sometimes it's better just to stop at that point and actually just look at what Liber is doing. And what she's doing is she's using speed equals distance divided by time. Again, I would write exactly the same formula just because it really cements it in my mind. So the speed in which she drives is at 56. And the distance we don't know, but the time it takes her is one hour and 15 minutes. So again, I'm going to use the same idea as I did before. It's one whole hour and then 15 out of 60 minutes. OK, if I put that into a calculator, all I need to do is multiply 56 by 1 and 15 over 60. And that will give me the distance. So my distance is going to be equal to 70 miles. OK, so we know then if she's going to go from Leeds to Manchester, she's going to drive 70 miles. She's going to do it at 56 miles per hour and it's going to take her an hour and 15 minutes. OK, then it says Zara makes the same journey in one hour and 45 minutes. So in other words, she does the same distance, 70 miles, but this time her speed is going to be different. So let's have a look at what's happening with uh, Zara. 
OK, again, I'm going to write the same formula. Speed equals distance divided by time. I know people don't do this, but it's just really helpful to kind of embed the formula each time in your own mind. So um, speed we don't know, but we do know the distance now is 70 and the time it takes uh, is one hour and then 45 out of 60. OK, I'm sorry about that little uh, noise there. 45 out of 60. OK, if I put that into a calculator, I'm going to get that Zara's speed is going to be equal to 40 miles per hour. And that would be the answer to part A of this particular question. OK, so part B, it says if Zara used another route to drive from Leeds to Manchester, how could this affect the, her answer? Well, this is one of those one mark kind of throwaway type questions they need to put into GCSEs to get the full 80 marks. So all I would say in there is something like it could be slower or faster, depending upon the route. OK. There we go. So she takes the scenic route rather than the motorway, then it's going to be a little bit slower for her. OK, let's move on then to the final two questions in this particular video where we're going to be looking at uh, question number six and question number seven. So let's have a look at John. So this is quite wordy, this particular one, but hopefully uh, we're going to treat it in much the same way as we did with the previous one. So John drives 280 miles from London to Newcastle, an average speed of 50 miles an hour for the first 150 miles. OK, well, why have they given us that first bit of information? The first bit of information is that we know that he drives at 50 miles an hour for the first 150 miles. So how long is it going to take him? Well, let's have a look at that then. So speed equals distance divided by time. Now, just to sort of help myself here, I'm just going to put a little note at the side here. First, 150 miles. OK, and that sort of keeps me focused on what I'm doing with this particular question. Well, um, the distance is 150. OK, and a speed of 50. So distance 150, the time it takes him. OK, well, as we did before, we need to make time the subject. So uh, we're actually going to end up dividing 150 by 50 and we're going to get time equals 150 divided by 50, which is equal to three hours. OK, so the first 150 miles, it took him three hours to actually drive. OK. And then it says at that point he encounters roadworks and takes a further two hours and five minutes to complete the rest of the journey. What's John's average speed for the whole journey? OK, well, what we do know is the whole distance is 280 miles and the first 150 miles it took him three hours. OK, so let's have a look then at the rest of the journey. And again, I'm going to write speed equals distance divided by time. OK, and we're looking now at a whole distance of 280 miles. But this time, the time it takes him is going to be three hours, which is his initial three hours for the first 150 miles. So that's three hours plus two hours and then five out of 60. OK, and again, if you've got a scientific calculator, you should be able to pop that into a calculator and work out 280 divided by 5 and 5 sixtieths. OK, and what you'll find with that is you're going to get uh, 55.0819 dot dot dot. OK, which is going to give me correct to one decimal place. So again, refer back to the answer. So the correct answer would be 55.1 uh, miles per hour. OK, and that would be correct to one decimal place. Hopefully that's OK for you. Let's move on then to question number seven, which is uh, Yusuf. OK, Yusuf goes jogging every morning and he can, <laughs> which is more than I do, and he can complete six miles in 32 minutes. OK, how long will it take Yusuf to run nine miles at the same speed in nine uh, to run nine miles at the same speed and that's going to be in minutes okay so let's have a look again let's have a look at speed equals distance 
divided by time. OK, so the first um, six miles or what every morning he's going to do six miles and he's going to get doing a time of 32 minutes. Now, remember, it's 32 out of 60. OK, so again, you can pop that in your calculator. You should be able to come up with something like um, 11 point two five miles per hour okay so that is his speed for six miles and again if you wanted to you could just write just in the corner there something like six miles and that would keep you on track with what you're being asked to do okay then it says how long will it take Yusuf to run nine miles at the same speed okay so let's have a look at what happens next so speed equals distance divided by time. OK, well, we know his speed is going to be 11.25 and we know the distance is going to be 9 divided by time. So again, we need to make time the subject. OK, and time is going to be equal to 9 over 11.25, which is going to give you 0 0.8. OK, now that is 0 0.8 hours. OK, we've been doing this in hours okay so 0 0.8 hours so in order for us to work out that in minutes what we do is we multiply 0 0.8 by 60 so the time or if you like the actual time is going to be 0 0.8 times 60 which is equal to 48 minutes and that would be the answer to part a of this particular question okay let's have a look then at part b Yusuf's average speed uh, decreases the further he runs. Sounds a bit like me. OK, so uh, it's a, how does this affect your answer? Well, this is the part A. OK, so let's say then if I write it here. OK, um, how does it affect his answer? It'd take longer. OK, he would take Longer. OK, so if he runs for further, OK, he's going to take longer to actually complete. OK, so hopefully that's OK for you. I'm so sorry about these little dots. It's actually coming from my window at the moment, but it will fade. Um, I'll try to get rid of them in, uh, in the video. OK, so um, please do add a comment below if you uh, need any help with any of these. Have a look at 3minutemaths.co.uk and you'll be able to download this, download this particular worksheet. And I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.